What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Bread and Wine Livecast. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Kelly Smith. Good evening. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome night. We're so glad you guys are joining us. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have had a good week. We have had quite the crazy week and a half. Um, all of our crazy. all of our family got sick. Yeah, every last one of us. So yeah. we were down. All of us were just down for the count. Yeah, we all got strep. Um, we had one of our children had hand, foot, and mouth disease. Which, if you any of you moms out there, you know what that is. You know how that's basically hell itself. Just that that's that would be my hell if yeah. like. That's what hell is, is like your worst nightmare. It's just children passing around hand, foot, and mouth disease. <laughs> it was insane. Horrible. I mean, I had a day where, uh, yeah, I think I switched careers three times. I, at one point, I was a real estate agent on last Wednesday. Yeah, I was just having that experience. So uh, I think I'm back. We've I'm been thinking. on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. So we're coming up for air. Yeah. So but that's life. Yeah. So. Tonight, we have something really cool. We have one of our dear friends, um, Mr. Drew McClure, in the house. So uh, I wish we had an audience. To clap? <laughs> where's, our, where's our clap button? <laughs> Yay! So, Drew, thanks for coming. Heck yeah, super excited to be here. So, it's awesome. Drew lives not too far from us. He's a dear friend. I've known Drew for over 15 years. Wow. That was a... Y'all are so old. <laughs> You do feel a little more mature when you can start referencing things like 15 years ago. Oh, gosh. I, I, yeah. Our son turns five tomorrow, by the way, so that's making me feel quite old. Yeah. We'll be there. Party. Yeah, come on. <sighs> wow. What are we going to talk about? What's All up? All right, so just kind of give us the update on a little bit quick update on your life. You've had a lot of changes happen recently. Yes, yes. So um, <clears throat> we'd love just to know like the past year – the journey that you've been on of just personal decisions, um, professional decisions, and where you, where you are at. Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to just just talk about the last year um, because it's really kind of the tail end of like a three year journey for me, which we can go into as much or as little as you want. But um, three years ago, I felt like I had a big shift in my life, and there was a lot of areas where emotionally physically and spiritually I felt kind of at a dead end like what used to work isn't working anymore you know mm -hmm. and how I'd used to see and find a way through to the next thing and to keep growing and mm -hmm. getting healthier and all that kind of stuff um, just stopped working I couldn't figure it out and so I like to say the last three years have been both the worst and also the very best that I've had yet they've been the most confusing yet also the most clarifying Hmm. and it's been a real journey like we use that word a lot about a yeah. journey yeah. you know yeah. yeah but most of the time we just talk about like an interesting week right when I mean a journey I mean <laughs> I went into full-on this has all my attention I am putting all my eggs in certain baskets mm -hmm. and but the first year was internal so we fast forward to this third year which is my professional life mm -hmm. That's very much external, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That whole first year was me diving in and being a student of my interior life and learning everything from how my brain works to what a healthy emotional life looks like yeah. to um, fear, things like fear, shame, and blame and how they play a role in my life. Like That was like a full year where I said, I'm not gonna learn about anything else, hmm. which is really hard. I mean, you feel kind of self-absorbed, totally. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. When you're having to put all other lessons on pause, but it was like, mm -hmm. if I don't get healthier here, nothing else matters, because right now I'm responding from the outside in, mm -hmm. and I believe the wisdom is to live from the inside out, mm -hmm. that you are actually controlling and cultivating your life with what was given to you, that there's this thing inside of you that's actually yours. Mm -hmm. Like between my ears and beneath my skin, that's like the only thing in this life I actually own. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of like your house. It's like the one place in all of this planet that you can say, this is mine. I can do what I want. Besides probably growing illegal drugs or something. <laughs> there's, there's a limit. <laughs> Every metaphor breaks down somewhere. <laughs> but I started there. I mean, I felt led by God to start there. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense looking back. Like, yeah, I needed to start inward before I, I shifted everything externally. Yeah. Because that was part of my illusion was thinking... If I could just keep shifting things externally, mm -hmm. it would finally 
reap a big dividend internally mm -hmm. and I realized I had it backwards. Does that and, make sense? Yeah, and so when you say you, sh you tried to shift things externally, what what does that mean? Uh, it'd be, could I find a better fit for me in my occupation? Could I have more time off? Could I, my could my, my wife finally change in a way that I would really enjoy? You know, like yeah. whatever it yeah. was, like if my kids would sleep more, um, all of these external things that were definitely influencing me, but they were actually controlling me because it, my happiness, my joy, my peace, peace was yeah. dependent upon them. And I had just kind of had a wake up call that I don't even claim to be my own. And in fact, it was kind of where I felt like the only place I could hear God was him saying, take your life back. Like right now, it's you're a servant to all of those things. Like you are totally under the control of everything around you and I want you to take your life back. I have a question on that. Sure. So. Um a lot of us have been taught to completely give up our life for the sake of God. Sure. When God himself tells you to take your own life back, yeah. like how like how would you explain that and, and to it's counter? Fantastic question. To counter Did it feel that? like selfish and yeah. like... It, you knew it was God though. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's the only place I could hear him. It's the only thing that made sense. So like why if, do you think he told you, if we're supposed to give everything to him, why do you think he told you to take your life back? Well, that's a twofold question, or I'd have a twofold answer to that. But the first is, I think there's a big difference in giving up your life and losing your life. Losing your life is a death of sorts. Yeah. It's not about relinquishing, right? Like We think that the ultimate spiritual person is someone that has taken their hands totally off of their life. When I think if you even study the teachings of Jesus, the most spiritual person is someone that is humbly taken a hold of their life for the first time yet under the direction and the care of God hmm. so I, one of the, that's awesome yeah so one of the things that I think most of the time right when you're in high school they tell you if you're gonna if you don't know what to answer on a, on a multiple choice test choose C <laughs> yeah I feel like it's the same thing in life that most of us live binary hmm. ones and zeros we only think there's an A and a B mm -hmm. yeah so we say it's either I control my life I live by my wisdom, by my strength, by my own desires, or I give it up, that's B, and I have no input, and therefore I have no responsibility. Mm. It feels really so nice awesome. to go yeah, like, well, it's not my fault, like God yeah. didn't come through. Right. Yeah. It's not my fault, my wife didn't change. Yeah. You know, whatever, it's like, I've given up my life. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a C. And I think C is, I actually feel very responsible for my life. And I feel like I'm a disciple, which that word disciple means a learner. Mm -hmm. That I'm going to become a steward and a learner of my life. And the person I'm learning from is C, right? It's, it's I'm not actually living only by my strength, my wisdom, my power. But God, can you teach me how to, how to be who you made me to be? Can you, mm. can you show me? So, for instance, like I've struggled with anxiety for a lot of my life, which is really weird for people to find out because I'm so calm on the surface. But however my personality works out, it's like a duck. We're on top of the water, very calm, but underneath the water, my feet are churning. I'm trying to process everything and overwhelmed oftentimes. Hmm. And I had measures of breakthrough for sure, but I got to a place, like I said, where it stopped working, where me just saying, God, give me peace, and then having moments of, of, of a gift of peace, where like, oh, I don't know what happened, but I yeah. feel better, yeah. mm -hmm. stopped happening. Hmm. Because think about it. like. If it's almost like that, that age old parable of giving a man a fish or teaching him to fish. Which yeah. does God really want for you? Does he right. want you just to come to the teat of heaven, <laughs> right? Does he want you just not, not to actually learn why you're anxious right. mm -hmm. and how to grow peace like you would a vegetable in your, your backyard, like actually cultivate it mm -hmm. and work with it. Mm -hmm. Most of us settle for, I just ask for it. Like yeah. God has become this easy. benefactor. Yeah. He's yeah. become yeah. Mm -hmm. this slot machine. Mm -hmm. And it works at the Gosh, beginning because yes. think about this, right? Like the whole picture of spiritual formation is going from born again, going from an infant in a, in a grown up's body. That's yeah. what's so profound. That's why it confused Nicodemus so much mm -hmm. was he's like, what are you talking about? Like, how do I become born again? And it's a metaphor. It's that you would actually lose your life. Like you'd start over going, I want to be reparented. Mm -hmm. I want to be a grown person who feels like they're <laughs> learning the world for the first time. Yes. And so it has this picture of growing up. So if you put yourself in those shoes, well, it makes sense at the beginning of any relationship with the divine that often it would be very much exchange. Because when you, we all have young kids. You have three, you have two and a third on the way. You realize how unfair it would be most of the time when they ask you for things for you to say, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's just it was just not capable, right? Yeah. So I think in our own mm. growth, I had learned like, yeah, when I have a problem, I pray. Yeah. And I just ask God to do it. And so much of my early walk with God, it was like, oh, he did it. Oh, man, how cool. You know, he, yeah. he answered that prayer. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize I was supposed to keep growing up. Because mm. at some point in your parenting with a kid, you go, hey, buddy, you do it. Yeah. You, there's a subtle transition. Mm. Oh, yeah. You do it. Or can I teach you how to do that? Yeah. Mm. You know, Maybe. can I sit next to you in the car while you're learning to drive and not just me shuff, you know, chauffeuring you around to your world? Yeah. I, I, and that changed the way I thought about God. I thought he wanted me dependent like a child mm-hmm. the rest of my life. Instead, I realized he's raising grownups mm-hmm. who are friends. And that's the whole progression Jesus did with his disciples where he said, you know, I used to call you a servant, which was even a word back then that was referred to as their children when they were young. But now I actually call you a friend because everything I know, everything my father shared with me, I share it with you. Every responsibility given to me, I'm giving that to you. Not yeah. being the savior of the world, yeah. but like I'm teaching you good, how to live. You know, I saw uh, this young uh, kid uh, post something on social media, and I won't say his name because we're all young and kids and say s- silly stuff. But he, it was so passionate, and he was like, "Man, enough of enough of all this talking about process and learning about your life and whatever." Like. We just need to give it all to Jesus. Like, that's the answer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything because... I might have read that. You know, okay. Yeah. So, I, I, I've, this is a side point, but I felt like years ago I learned from wise people, you never punch down, you always punch up. So, like, anyone that is actually maybe uh, younger than you or for whatever <laughs> reason there's an imbalance of power, hmm. you're just a bully when you punch down. Yeah. Like, my, if I had responded to social media and even said anything contradicting that, it's like, what good does that do? Right. It feels good to you, it ruins them. Right. right. You only punch up. Yeah. You speak truth to power, something right. more powerful than you. So I let it go. But I've been thinking about it. I'm going, well, you're going to have a lot of problem being a follower of Jesus because all he did was teach about life. So if you just say, don't think about life, don't learn about your life, don't, yeah. you don't apply these lessons and just talk about wisdom and, and, and practicality, well, then you can't be a disciple of Jesus because all he talked about was how to live your life. You also can't read any of the Proverbs. You can't sing any of the Psalms because oh, yeah. all of them are about, like, oh learning about Get your life. Started. Right? Dude, I, I recently saw, mm. I, it was late one night, and <laughs> someone posted a Twitter thing, like, can we just sing more songs about Jesus and not about process? Stop all these process songs. Yeah. Let's just talk about Jesus. And it was in me. I was like, I have to respond to this, yeah. you know? And so I did. And I just said, all right, does that mean we need to stop singing the Psalms then? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And just put a little smiley face. And I was like, man, it, it, it feels like almost like I, I see the idea. Like, let's just focus on Jesus. Just sing about him, you yeah, know. But yeah. like who he was, his life embodied. He was bringing people into his his work, his yeah. process. He was growing in wisdom. Yeah. and. I don't know. It just it's funny that those those are like black and white. Like yeah. it's either sing about Jesus or there's this process thing. It's like yeah. wait, when did that get like separate? Especially when the main identity marker and don't, I'm not talking about like obviously being a son or a daughter is like the chief identity marker, but practically speaking, he had disciples. He was a rabbi, he was a teacher, and he had people learning from him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like that was the relationship that we were to enter into because they were ma- supposed to make other disciples who made other disciples. And he said, everything you've heard me linear. say, tell them that. And he mm-hmm. talks these parables about building your life again and how you're going to build it on the rock. And the people that build their house on the rock are those who have applied my wisdom and my teaching and now live their life on that foundation, mm-hmm. right? So again, mm-hmm. you have to ask yourself, what do you think God really wants? And how is he accomplishing, you know, the Bible's purpose, you know, in the scripture, it would say that his purpose was to save the world. Well, we broke the world, right? Us, us learning, uh, us not understanding how to relate to each other, to ourselves. We break our world all the time. Mm-hmm. So is the answer really to just do it for us? Or is it to teach us how to stop breaking the damn world mm-hmm. and live a different way that actually reconciles the world, that heals instead of kills, that promotes peace instead of anxiety, that brings closeness instead of promotes separation, you only get that not through some magical exchange, but from learning. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I used to see myself or other people or my situation this way, and he's showing me I have to change my mind. Mm -hmm. The very first thing he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, repent. 
change the way you think mm -hmm. because a new way of being in the world mm -hmm. is here. And some people have said Jesus was teaching us how to be truly human. And that's pretty, Oof. that's a game changer. Like right. what if he was teaching you how to be truly human, not teaching you where and when the escape ship was coming? Right. Right? Yeah. So I just felt like in a big way, I got mm. in the game. I said, okay, like I'm no longer going to abdicate the responsibility for my life to the people around me or to God to answer some prayer, nor am I going to go so far to say, I got this. Mm -hmm. I can do this on my own. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I've learned both lessons don't work in the end. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can do is, can you lead me and show me the next step? Mm -hmm. Will you partner with me in growing up? And, and taking responsibility for my life. And are there days when you feel like it is more you and you're like, God, where are you? Like, yeah. And then other days you're like, wow, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, so you feel both. Oh, yeah, all the time. And days yeah. you feel selfish or like you're doing it wrong, and maybe you are. Mm -hmm. And days you feel like totally in the flow of, wow, this is the thing he was showing me and I'm applying it and look at the dividends, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's been all over the map. And that was even... If we want to get really personal, that was at the same time that that was happening. It was actually meaning three years ago, this new journey was actually the tail end of a very hard season where I felt like God himself had died on me and where my relationship with him drastically changed in how I saw him, how I related to him, mm -hmm. who I knew him to be. And so this was all of this was new. It was like your dad changing hats, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, I knew you as this and now I know you as this yeah. but what's really crazy and maybe some people get encouragement out of this it was a very disconcerting time until I actually started thinking about the Gospels again and what I mean by that is when I thought just outside of like my hermeneutics like what does this verse say was but like okay what was the story of Jesus again like what what did he do what was it like for the people that followed him and thought he was God well they were found by him and they knew this man in the flesh, yet they recognized or believed he was divine mm -hmm. and that he was there to save them. And he did miracles and healings and they could touch him and they could say, God is this skin color, this hair color, this eye color. And I know where he's tangible. He, he's very tangible. Mm -hmm. And I know where he is and where he isn't because he's right here yeah. in the flesh, right? But then the part we all forget about because we've just relinquished this part of the story to the cosmic plan of salvation. But if you're just thinking in terms of a person trying to follow God, mm -hmm. he dies on them. Yeah. Like, I don't know how we've missed that. Like the MO of God is that he will die on you. Literally. Yeah. It, there's going to be a place where the, the person that yeah. saved you and found you yeah. is going to die. And you're going to have an experience, you know, old Christian mystics would call it the dark night of the soul or whatever. Like many different people start with many different ways. But like there's this really shake up moment that seems to happen in your faith journey where... I don't know where you went. I'm looking for you in all the same places and you're not there. Hmm. I don't know where you went because I'm praying and I'm not hearing you anymore or whatever, right? Yeah. And that happened to me. And, and when you know it's happening to you, and when you know it's this that's happening, your real honest reflection is you feel like it's happening to you. You're not happening to it. And what I mean by, we've all had those seasons where you know, like I'm just running from my life and I'm running from yeah. God or whatever. And that's right. why there's a feeling of disconnect. This feels like I'm showing up to all the same places. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all the same, the same things. Prayers. Singing the worship song. The I'm showing up. Yeah. And, I, and even in my heart, like, I still want to know you and follow you to the best of my ability, but you vanished. Like, mm -hmm. you've, or you changed your dynamic, and I don't know yeah. what to grip on. I'm not onto resonating anymore. like I used to. Yeah. Like you're speaking a different language to me now. Yeah. So for me, <laughs> That was a very disconcerting time, but I found so much direction or comfort in like, oh, this has happened before. He's done this before. And that means I can actually forecast the story a little bit. Like hmm. if I'm in the place where those three days mm -hmm. where he's just gone, he's not coming back, no matter where you look, he's gone. I can hope that he's coming back. And what's wild is I did and I do feel like God has come back for me. But if you stick to the story, it's the same as my experience in life. And this is my experience. I'm not expecting it to be yours or whatever. But in my experience, the God that came back for me was in many ways the same, but in many more ways different than the God who died on me. And this is true to the story. Because the Jesus who came back, why was it? It's only been three days, yet they could not recognize him. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't just the shock of he was gone and he's back. Mm-hmm. Like disciples of his walking with him an entire journey didn't recognize it was him till they had communion. Then he disappears, which he didn't have that power before, nor did he ever do that. <laughs> yeah, He never even ran fast enough to lose you. Yeah. You could always slowly walk with him wherever he went. He vanishes again. And then it wasn't until they were reflecting, they go, oh, weren't our hearts not burning within mm-hmm. us? And so this is what changed for me. God went from the tangible flesh God, I knew where I had all the answers. I knew what he was about and what he wasn't about, who he liked. Get who up he in daddy's That's lap. The foundations, yeah. like 101. Yeah, God but also the concreteness of it, like yeah. the, the like, certainty. I pray he hold like. I was given all the certainty. Me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it's like you knew if you have this problem, you do this. If you're in this place, this is where he is or this is where he isn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is how he operates. This is him and like a formula. Very much because he's flesh and blood. Right. And I can see him. And if he's here, he's not there. And he responds always in this mm-hmm. way because I've seen this way. But mm-hmm. when he comes back, he comes back kind of in the flesh, but kind of not. Mm-hmm. And even then, he leaves again, but he leaves his spirit. Now, again, we're used to, and I do think it's tangible, but we're used to only thinking about God leaving his spirit in a very uh, um, fundamental or like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Literal way, which, again, I don't. People are going to freak out if they think, I don't think the Holy Spirit is literal. But there is that and, think about the metaphor. He came in the flesh, but he left you his spirit. Meaning, I was left with a burning heart as my only direction of whether this was God speaking to me or not. Not a full-on conversation, but like, is my heart not burning within me? This mm-hmm. must be God. This mm-hmm. feels like a tug in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of the God that I knew, that's the only way I could recognize him. When I think back on, on the God I knew yeah. and I read his scriptures, this feels like the spirit of what he was getting at. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what actually filled his people. He led him in the flesh, but he filled them with his spirit, which is open. Like spirit can't be controlled, can't Mm -hmm. be boxed in, can't be, and that's why he started breaking all the rules even more because now he's spirit, not flesh, and they're having to deal with, well, these Gentiles are coming to faith and that breaks all of our rules, but did not the spirit fall? Like he can do, it's kind of like he starts getting wilder than you ever knew, mm-hmm. yeah. less controllable, less tangible, mm-hmm. more distant. But in the same way, his distance actually left a, a closeness that they had never had before. Mm-hmm. I could be here, but if someone's inside of me, when you've, when you've mm-hmm. occupied the very essence of who I am, yeah. you're closer than a relationship outside of me, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So I went through this really weird time of it's like, almost like you build a, you've built a structure we're talking about what you were talking about earlier the, yeah. the the foundations of who god is the things that you the certainties of god that you knew yeah. like that's your structure to feel experience freedom yeah like so whenever and it we, was real so whenever we come to know jesus for the first time we feel so much freedom because we've learned these this new um we, we've entered this new structure of basics of, of things that we can have faith in and trust and hope in. And then once we grow up, it's almost like we have to completely obliterate that structure. Yeah. It, when the spirit comes and we're not left with the physical, tangible yeah. uh, foundation anymore, yeah. we have to widen our range of our perspective of who God is, yeah. who this, how the spirit interacts with us. We have to completely obliterate the structure and it's, that's where we feel the wobble. It's like, okay, well, what do I build? Like, yeah. how do I contain this? Yeah. And if it's not supposed to be contained, then what do I do to feel like I can grip onto something? Because yeah. I want to be able to have the totality, that feeling of I can, you know, stable myself right. mm-hmm. again. Well, there's this, there's this guy, um, Peter Rollins. He's an <clears throat> Irish philosopher and theologian and all that Amazing. stuff. He's really good. He'll mess with you which most prophets do, you know? Yeah. Uh, but he says he believes the truest sign of spiritual maturity is being broken of the need for certainty. So think about that. Like mm-hmm. the truest sign of spiritual mm. maturity is not greater certainty. The true sign of spiritual maturity is the ability to lose your need for certainty. Mm. Which it feels like the opposite. Like most of us think like to because, grow in God is to go from mystery oh, to answers. Yeah. Right. To right. go from not knowing right. to knowing this more than I've ever is. known. Right. And now and I can as humans we have to have answers. And now I can build a kingdom and a message yeah. around this and I can I can build a box and stand on this. Yeah. But he actually would challenge that if you look at scripture and the way God moves and works, it's kind of the opposite where you go from all of your assumptions, which are certainties, 
mm-hmm. and that those are the things that you've actually found your peace in. Mm-hmm. That oh yeah, we're afraid. I mean, the Bible seems to think that we're all flight animals. Like that at our core, we start off afraid. That if something goes bump in the night, we never assume it's an angel. We always assume it's a monster. What is that like? Mm. Oh, so be, why do I say it? Well, because the most repeated command in the scripture is to not be afraid. Mm-hmm. It's like we have this fear problem, right? And so the way we deal with fear before God really matures us is by finding certainty, even if you're wrong. Like if I could just know, if I can just label you, you scare me less. Yeah. If I can say you, I know what you will do. I know mm-hmm. that you always do this and you never do this and you always let me down in these ways. Mm-hmm. I can put a label on you and I can stop seeing you as a mystery to be engaged and instead a label to be handled and put in the corner, then I'll feel okay. Yeah. Because now you're not going to surprise me because I know you, right? So we do this about God. We do this about people. We do this about our tribe and other tribes, us oh, versus yeah. them, whatever. People have told me that I'm a mystery for... All of my life. Yeah. And it, <laughs> That's true. Which has kept me isolated in a lot of ways. Right. And this is what we do, right? Is that people that feel mysterious to us scare us because yeah. we don't know how to predict them. Yeah. So to handle our fear, instead of getting to know them and, in, and encountering a benevolent mystery, we instead decide to label them. Mm-hmm. and Exclude. Right. And put them in the corner. Yeah. Sure. So it's either laziness or a lack of care. It's one or the other. Either I'm lazy and I don't have the time or the energy to get to know you or I don't care because mm-hmm. you scare me. I want to protect me mm-hmm. and stop getting to know you. So it's a very long answer to God kind of did that to me. And uh, it was a very long process of like, man, all these like foundational things were shaking mm-hmm. or become fluid or whatever. And so are you now just a little more okay with that? Yeah. You've learned to, and... to hug the cloud. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because grasping is the problem in the first place so yeah. it's not even about a new thing to grasp yeah. yeah it's actually about not needing to grasp at all and be okay with something landing in my hand and then flying out again mm-hmm. so people ask me all the time like what's the biggest so what did you change your mind on you thought it was this now you think it's this i'm going well there were some things that i think differently on now yeah but you're missing the point the main point was i'm changing the way i related to my answers in the first place yeah mm-hmm. i used to relate to answers like this oh yeah you know what i mean this is the truth and the greatest thing i can do is never let go of this mm-hmm. Now I go, actually, trust looks like saying, I think this is the truth. And if you want to show me something different, I'm all ears. So you embrace mystery, not like someone forcing yourself upon another. Because if we really believe God is a being, then we, can no- we need to stop groping him. We've got to stop advancing on him like, I need to like, be able to handle you. Yeah. And, 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 and make you, you know, serve my life the way I want to or whatever. And instead go, I'm actually going to respect you. And I'm not going to, I'm going to open-handedly engage with you. I don't need to grasp onto you. If you want to leave, you can leave. That's your prerogative. If you want to be mysterious, you can be mysterious. That's your prerogative. You know what I mean? And I'm at best learning on the fly what I think you're like, but you are free to show me something new at any time. I went through a lot of fear to get there. This is no, like, I can't believe how (laughs) well I did this. I was killed because when he dies, you die. Mm -hmm. Your world comes crumbling down. Mm -hmm. So it was like... I'm not asking for this. I'm not like better than anybody at this. This is happening to me and I'm dying a slow death to all of my certainties, to all of my assumptions. Mm -hmm. And I hate it because I liked my little world. I Mm -hmm. liked my house of cards. Oh yeah. And you're knocking it down. So you're really left with no other choice. Either come back from the dead or stay dead. Either adjust to a new way of encountering him and life and yourself Mm -hmm. or don't. So that was just coming out and I started sensing him in my heart like the burning heart thing or whatever. And that was when I started that journey of the only place I could find him, the only place that made sense to me. The only thing that made my heart race was it's time to take responsibility for your life again. And you need to become a learner of how to cultivate your life instead of reacting to your life. And I had no other choice. So that's kind of, I guess, what some people teach on construction, deconstruction, Deconstruction. reconstruction. Do you feel like... I like like that, but... The only thing, and even in this moment, it makes sense that I feel this way. The only thing I would critique on that is actually it's a brilliant analogy to understand seasons. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if there's a better word you could use, but the only thing where that metaphor breaks down is that is a very you uh, control oriented thing. Like I constructed something, then I deconstructed something, then I reconstructed something. Right. Again, this felt like growth and regrowth. It felt like more was done to me. Yeah, like, like he God's constructed doing this something to, uh, in me. He to deconstructed something in me, yeah. and he is in the process of reconstructing something in me. You know what mm. I mean? So it's, it's like, like a plant that's that that grows, and then it dies because it gets 
no water, no sun. Yeah. And then it's, you know, dead again. And then the next season, it gets enough sun, and it gets enough water, yep. and then it regrows, and then that it just happens. But how silly would you, th- if, if let's animate, no let's control. personify, right, let's personify that plant. How silly would you feel looking back and trying to tell anybody, I grew, then I decided to die, and I decided to be right, reborn. Right. And you're like, it I was completely at the mercy yeah. of the weather. It's the law of nature. Yeah. Exactly. Like you were... It put gosh. me in my place where I was like, oh my God, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a, a long time Jesus generation mm-hmm. Christian guy, and I still am a follower of Jesus and all of those things, but God, this is so painful. You're taking away all my security and my comfort. And what's really wild too is that some people, God dies in them through something happening around them. This is one of those things I couldn't even point to anything. Hmm. It wasn't like we had a tragic loss of a life of a loved one or you know something came up that I couldn't explain and it unraveled me. It was just like, you, my life is normal and you're disappearing and the answers aren't working anymore and yeah. all you know what I mean it's like oh, yeah. watching him go to the cross like where are you going you know you're watching yeah. this be done to him in mm-hmm. a sense and then you're left with did I even know him in the first place through those three days should I just go back to life before I knew him you know because yeah. you, you assumed and you played out where this whole thing with God was going and then he comes back and you mm. have to readjust again and go okay so what is this whole thing about <clears throat> how does this whole thing work yeah. where are you taking me what do you like? You were, you're filled with more questions than you even had at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, right. I want to say, if, you, if anyone has any questions, we'd love for you to Yeah, chime we've got in a here. bunch of different people jumping in. So, so ask excited. away. Um, what are you <laughs> most excited right now in your life? Like, what do you like? Man, this is what I'm, this is what I'm kind of into. This is what's exciting me right now. Um, well, twofold, and I'll give you the cliche answer that's actually real it's god i know no <laughs> he's still a mystery to me sometimes well, i like him sometimes saved. i don't <laughs> um man we're in a really beautiful season of having young kids mm-hmm. and it wasn't beautiful feeling at first and <laughs> many days it's not sometimes beautiful. It doesn't feel very beautiful yeah but uh this journey has forced me to be so present with myself mm. and even find the real value of my own life and learning mm. to cultivate and care for myself that finally, because this is why I think it's a God thing, is that if this only led to me being more consumed with myself, then it would just be a selfish journey. But when you learn to love yourself, you can actually learn to love others, right? This is a Jesus thing. Love mm-hmm. others as you, learn your, as, as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. It started to overflow some, where I come home and I am so overjoyed that I had these little nuggets and that I'm getting to cultivate and care for them and know them. I'm just sort of excited. Like mm-hmm. I go to every one of uh, my oldest daughter's gymnastics thing because I'm like, what am I going to learn about her? Like I'm only used to seeing her in a certain setting, but now she's like with other kids and learning a new thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just, I sit at the top and I'm like, what am I learning about you? Mm-hmm. Like you're fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. How are you going to respond to trouble or to fear or mm-hmm. to coaching or whatever? Like I want to know about you, right? So there's that answer, but I don't want to. That's go. awesome. Yeah, it's cool, but. I also have days that I want to throw them across the room, so I don't want to <laughs> overly sound like some amazing you're the, parent. You're the perfect dad. But genuinely, no, not at all. But genuinely, they excite me and my wife. Dad goals. And getting to know her as well. My family unit is really exciting. Um, and you have a boy coming. I've got a boy coming. Yeah. i got two daughters, and I've got a surprise son on the way. Um, it is mine. <laughs> it, it is mine. Caroline, what are you not saying? <laughs> but we weren't planning on it, but we were... I had a secret hope that we'd have a boy one day. So yeah. he's awesome. almost here. Um, man, I don't. I guess what I'm excited about is that journey went from learning about my interior life to then learning about my actual physical body. So if you work inside out. Mm-hmm. The second year, I felt like God said, it's, it's time to take care of yourself. They're really interconnected. And with, like science is actually showing us how interconnected like your exercise and your diet is to feelings of like joy and sure. peace and release Mind, of body, dopamine spirit. or serotonin. Or even your, your immune system and yeah. or the opposite, the releasing of the kind of chemicals that give you anxiousness or whatever. Like they're very inter- interconnected. And I was 30 pounds overweight. I was not active. I was not moving. <laughs> Do you remember that day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, you talking about when I called you and decided to get in shape? Yeah, but and, I was like, man, you're so close. Yeah. So I, I'm 5'10", and at the time I weighed 195, I think, or something. Yeah. And I texted Ben. I was like, Ben, this is ridiculous. I weigh 195. And I'm, I'm going to change my life, my next direction, my new thing is I'm going to get my physical shape. And Ben said, don't do it. He said, not yet. You're so close to 200. Just give it a high five. 
It's like, bro, you, you're all, you, you got to hit 200, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. you were that close. Yeah. Like, just for the story. Ben loves a good story. Uh, it's all yeah. about the story. <laughs> God. Which, by the way, like, my interior life, my physical life, now my professional life, that's, that's the order it went in the first year of my interior life, then my, my, my actual health, and then now my professional life this season. All of those had been on my heart and in part of where I was trying to grow in for years. I have too many <laughs> wasted dollars in programs and <laughs> and shakes and things that, like I never <laughs> finished. I did like P3X and I had to have like hundreds of dollars of protein shakes I would forget about that I never did. And my wife was just like, why are you still buying these programs? I remember one day it was so embarrassing. We were on the way to a movie and we had, the movie theater was connected to a Marshalls and we were walking through a Marshalls first because it's like her crap cocaine. Oh, wow. So we're walking through there and I just gravitate towards the exercise clothes and I'm 30 pounds overweight. I haven't committed yet to any membership, gym membership or beach body or whatever. Right. And I'm picking out another shirt, which I've done before. And she was like, can we be honest? Why are you buying this? Like, you're not going to use it. Buying this shirt doesn't actually mean you're going to lose weight. Exactly. <laughs> and I just remember looking at her going, do you really want me to quit? Because this is me still trying. <laughs> like, if I just, like, just stop. let go. If I stop believing, and this is actually pretty important. If I stop believing I can change, if I, if I say, just decide, this is not going to work in my life. I'm just never going to get this. Right. Like, that's something I actually feel like God, is you not You would okay. hit 200. I would. I'd be so proud. But here's the thing. Like, it's not even about, like, well, I, I didn't look good. I didn't have the energy to match my kids. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. When yeah. every day you wake up and there's three little people that are yours and no one else oh. is going, teach me or run with me or play with me, and I can't match that energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, this is something I can't afford to just go, well, it's just not in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. There's some things you, you just realize, hey, I've been trying for this for a long time, and it's not in the cards. American Idol's not going to work out for me. Yeah. There's some things like that. Yeah. And there's other, no, no. And there's other things <laughs> that are Stop. like, this is that. not negotiable. I, yeah. don't, I need a break. I don't need a pass. Like, I need a break. I need some compassion that I'm not there yet, mm -hmm. but I don't need a pass. So don't you give up on me. Don't me give up on me. I just haven't figured out how to implement this yet. So you just, dude. Well, dude, what changed was not like more willpower. It was that I literally felt God leading me step by step. And I discovered later, you gave me that book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Yeah. That articulated what I, why I was finally seeing breakthrough. And it was that I finally focused on one area and one area alone mm -hmm. and gave all of my resources to that. Man. That I, we all of us, because we're so insecure about where we are, right? Sure. Because we actually just feel mm -hmm. like a lot of self-incrimination that I should be here as a mom, as a, as, a, as a spiritual person, as a husband, whatever, we try to change everything at once. Like, I know the way that alleviate my, my own self-incrimination is to be better at all of it by next month. And so we try to win all these wars on multiple fronts and we don't have the resources. Yeah. So for the first time, I slowed down and said, you know what, I'm okay as I am, but I'm not staying here. So I have some compassion for me that like I'm gonna calm myself down that I'm still a lovable, valuable person. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm not freaking out, what's the best way to grow? Is it all at once? No, I think I'm just going to do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And guess what you can do? You can win battles you never thought you could when you've only got one battle in front of you. So the first year, that's why I was only one thing. I have to get breakthrough in my interior life. I've got a grip on my emotionality, on my, my, my unhealthy towards healthy emotional. Yeah. And the physical was like nothing else. Like I'm not trying to be better at anything else. Like, I am going to spend money, time, reading books. I'm going to do whatever I have. But then I'm also going to say, and God, I need you to lead me in this area too. And what's mm -hmm. wild is I never found anything that felt like I enjoyed. So that's pretty hard to stick to something if you're running and you don't enjoy running, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. And when I thought about working out, I was like, I think I might enjoy that because I used to be an athletic person, but I don't know even know what to do. So right. I would get overwhelmed and just not mm -hmm. go. And I'm sitting there going, God, I know this is the area you have for me. This is where you're promising, but also pushing me to grow. But I don't know what to do. And that week when I said, I'm doing it, I texted you in that week of going, I'm just going to move forward. My wife meets, who now are cl really close friends of ours, randomly meets this girl, Peyton. Which I think she's watching. Hey, Peyton. Oh, what's up, Peyton? And uh, she's, oh, they're just getting to know each other. And she just tells her the season that I'm in. And she's like, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do, though. We can't afford a gym membership. But I think Drew would really enjoy that. And she's like, you know, my husband and I actually own a gym. Go Performance, by the way. And Tyrone, it's amazing. Right down the road. <laughs> he can just come work out with me. And I was like, what? Hmm. Are you serious? Like, yeah, he can just come work out with me. And I don't, I've never met this guy. I've never met Peyton, all these people. And they were so generous that they were like, but that was my breakthrough I needed. Like where God met me. Yes. It wasn't just me and my willpower. I go, 
I can't, this is my opportunity. If I turn this down, I'm going back to my own efforts where I keep failing. Yeah. I'm going to go, and I told the guy, I said, I want you to disciple me. I disciple people and spiritual stuff all the time. I need someone to disciple me in physically taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And every day, five days a week at two o'clock, I'd meet and I'd show up and I would do whatever he told me to do. And over, it's been a year and a half now, he's transformed my life and my physical health and my energy and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, I lost the weight, but it was never about that, you know? And so I started getting these understandings and keys, and that's where I was getting to what I'm excited about, is that I'm actually learning how this thing works. Not like formulaic, but principles Mm -hmm. of how God works with you and how you grow and how you can cultivate a greater life. I just get super pumped to share that. Mm -hmm. So there's whatever avenues are in front of me right now, I'm trying to share. You're sharing your real real stuff that really works. Yeah, what has actually worked. Not what I think should happen. But all I want to talk about is like, here's what it's been like for me and not box anybody into that, mm-hmm. but say, take from this as you will. If you need any growth in these areas, like here's what I've learned, maybe it'll work for you, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's where we're at. That book, by the way, is called The One Thing, and it's a great book for anyone who feels Call stuck. Uh, Gary Keller, the guy who started Keller Williams, one of my buddies told me to read it. And uh, yeah, definitely. It's awesome. I mean, it catalyzed everything I was like intuitively learning. Yeah. He put it on paper. And I was like, this is just how this works. Yeah. And he went even into how you understand willpower and decision making and choices and how you can actually make sure you're winning at the most important. That's the idea of the one thing is are you at least winning where you've identified as the most important win for you? Because most so, of us. So the thing is, is, is prioritizing. Like, almost like making a list Yeah. Some, for some of us. Yeah. Like yeah. Prioritizing. What's the number one thing that I want to go after? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's right cool? Now. What you can do, and she, my wife is watching this, so she knows we haven't done it perfectly, but one of the things you can do, we've, we've kind of done together, is go, hey, why don't you tell me your one thing, and I'll do whatever I can to help you win there, and let me tell you my one thing, and we have an unusual amount of grace for what I need to get there. So like... I, well, I'm working out five days a week at two o'clock. That's because my wife is saying, okay, mm-hmm. I'll watch the kids, which I'm already tired. It's the middle of the day. So you can go get this because I so and pregnant and pregnant so because I so recognize this burden yeah. and this is the That's thing awesome. being highlighted. Right. Mm-hmm. So then you can return it and go, well, then what's your one thing? Yeah. Do you need to get out of the house at X amount of time to get your sanity? Like, okay, then I'll watch the kids or we'll pay for a babysitter. Like, I'm not going, I'm going to give you unusual amounts of grace there until you get that win because we're going to support each other in our one thing. And when do you find you've gotten the win? Uh, For me, it's when something has moved from willpower to habit. And this is actually really important because when you're trying to do something new, it usually means you're making a new choice, a choice to think about it differently or to engage in activity you haven't been engaging. It's, but it comes out of a willpower, meaning I don't want to do this, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what they, all these studies have found, it's in that one thing book as well. What's amazing is after a certain amount of time, depending on what it is, it might be 30 days, mm-hmm. it might be three months. Most of it's closer to three months. But however your chemistry works and your relationship to the things you do in this life, you go from using willpower, which is finite. They've been able to do these Stanford studies that like you don't have an infinite amount of willpower, but you beat yourself up because you think you should. Well, every time you make a decision, you have less decision power for the next one. Right. You go from using willpower to make your new decision, and then at some point, it almost just happens. You go, oh, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Or this is the automatic reflex in me now. Like, feel, like for in the internal world, I started realizing when I would mess up or, or not be who I, I could have been in a moment or whatever, instead of my reflex being fear, shame, and blame and having to use willpower to talk myself off that ledge, when compassion was the first thing that came in my heart, when understanding and grace for myself, mm-hmm. I go, oh, this is no longer my one thing. It's now moved into the habit category or the ingrained category, right. and I've got capital back. So if, if, think about it. If you're spending money on, on a new thing, you're spending emotional money, mental money, you're spending time, physical money, and all of a sudden it starts paying you because it's now it's, it's like an investment. It's, it's actually monetized, and now it's giving life back to you. Mm-hmm. Right. You now get that capital back, and you can now turn it with more because it's giving it's like momentum it's giving you more and now you can turn to the next thing and go what am i going to apply this to right so the second one was like i got all this momentum of feeling amazing inside i want to feel amazing outside like my body mm-hmm. but i'm not using all that willpower so now i'm going to go i was reading books on like uh neuroscience and i was reading books on healthy emotionality like there's a book uh, uh cesaro on emotional uh healthy emotionality or spirituality or something like that 
And I'm reading all these books because I'm learning. I'm using, but I'm right. using money. I'm using time. I'm using energy to choose to instead of watch TV, read a book. When it switched, I stopped reading those books. Not that I'll never stop growing, but I'm yeah. in the rhythm of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, what's the new thing? I started asking Lane. I would like walk around the gym, and like now I'm using my learning, power, my resources to go. Why do you like coming here? I remember like interviewing people at the gym. <laughs> you come here a lot. Why do you like this? <laughs> what am I missing? You know, yeah. I'm actually using physical money. Mm-hmm. I was reading books. I'd go to I'd go to Barnes and Noble and just start picking up books on uh, nutrition or on exercise. Oh, like golly. I've got, I'm going to use my capital on this. And then it came to we right, when I missed a day, I missed it. And when I was tired and I went to work out, it was a no-brainer. I realized, oh, this is no longer my one thing. Like, I'm now in the habit of doing this, and I really enjoy this. So what's mm-hmm. next? And immediately I knew it was professional. You're still not where you're supposed to be professionally. There's a, there's, there's a greater inf- influence and enjoyment that you could have in your professional life. Hmm. So let's go on that journey, and that's where we are today. You know, I quit my job uh, working full-time for the church. And I'm not at the next thing yet. I'm in that like weird wilderness of I know there's somewhere else, but I don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's incredibly uncomfortable. You're learning what it's not. I'm learning what's not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I've decided like this is the thing. Yeah. And I'm going to like hone in on what are you telling me? Mm-hmm. What can I learn? What steps do I need to take to try to get some movement in an area that this is just me for whatever reason? I've worked for the church for ten years. I felt like a duck out of water, not because I wasn't good at it. But in my heart, everyone else could find peace and settle in. Like I can see myself here and I know when I keep moving up where my perfect fit is and I can never feel that way. Mm-hmm. And so it was always an area I knew that needed to be addressed. But it's like now's the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now's the time to look at it and go, okay, like we're, what, then what let's is it? This, let's, let's face this. Let's take a risk. Like let's go on a journey. Let's be uncomfortable. Let's be in pain, which all three of those years, each one had its own kind of pain. Oh, yeah. Facing emotional pain. <sighs> It's tough. Facing physical pain, it's tough. And now I'm facing professional angst. Mm-hmm. My calling, you know? Yeah. What is that? And feeling purposeless and directionless and you're facing pain. But you've got to say, the only way I'm going to get to a new life, a resurrected life, is to go through a death. i got to face pain. Mm. All, it's always the doorway. You can, you can never avoid pain uh, to get to where you want to go that's not currently in your life. You've got to go through some kind of pain. Some kind of death of ego, some kind of death of control, whatever it is, you got to go through some kind of death to get something new to to to, to grow out of you. So, I, I mean, I don't so know where I'm good, going. Dude. If you want to ask me where I'm going, I have no clue. I mean, I, have, I think I'm yeah. supposed to communicate and share or whatever, but Absolutely. to who, about what? Man, I don't know. And you've reached that point where, like, if you go, is this like, interesting at all? Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. If, if anyone out there has any questions, I see a bunch of people are jumping in on this combo. You can totally throw some questions. I'm naked right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Emotionally, Drew, I'm wearing Drew. clothes. <laughs> uh, I want to know I something. I'll ask try. you. So, on your bad days, what yeah. does it look like for you? On your bad days, like, like how do I respond to it, or like what specifically does a bad day look like? When you're just Both. not believing in yourself, yeah, you're just off, man. Because for a lot of people, I mean, I mean, everyone has their own personality. Everyone responds to things differently. Like, does does facing the pain ever defeat you? And is it ever like really difficult to get back up? Yeah. And how do you how do you talk your in, yourself into getting back up? First thing I don't do is talk myself into getting back up. I ask somebody else to talk to me. So I call your husband a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Ben! And I send him to you. Yeah. Yeah. The other day, Kelly got on the phone and said, "Talk to Ben off the ledge." Right. Um, I don't want him to be a real estate agent right now. But this kind of goes. <laughs> this kind of goes back to how do you relate to things? Not A, not B, not C, but C mm-hmm. is I've realized like I've got to take responsibility, and I can't put that pressure on anybody else in any of these areas of my life. Mm-hmm. But I also can't be alone. Mm-hmm. So C is that like you're still interdependent on God and on other people. But you still take responsibility. There's no blame. Sure. Yeah. There's no like you'll be my answer. But oh, yeah. you realize I I don't have what it takes to get where I'm going, and so I might need another voice who's it's not a down. Supplement a supplement. Yeah, just like a vitamin. Whatever. Yeah, to provide protein shake. Yeah, come on. <laughs> to provide some energy, right? Or to provide some belief. Yeah. And I don't believe in myself. So my wife going, no, you're not dumb. I'm glad you made that decision, even though I'm going. I made this really crazy decision for our family, and her going, yeah, but it's the right thing. You're going. Okay, I'll take your faith until I get mine yes. back. Yes, yeah. right. Totally. I'll borrow yours until it's growing in me again. Mm-hmm. And I just realized this might take a minute. Mm-hmm. And it won't be the last time I get knocked down. It's like a set of waves mm-hmm. coming in. Like usually it comes in threes or fours where you get knocked yeah. once and you got a little bit of strength and then by the end of the week 
you just feel like I can't believe I'm here and I don't know where I'm going and all those self doubts and all that stuff comes in. But those are the things, those are actually the reason why you're doing this. It's because you have to face those doubts. You've got to walk through those giants of insecurity and all that stuff to really be who you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So that what if that's a sign you're doing the right thing, not the wrong thing? That's what we talk about all the time. Like what mm-hmm. if this difficulty, what if this rising insecurity yeah. is actually so a sense. sign that you're doing the right thing, <laughs> not the wrong thing? Right? So we talk about often the par- you know, not the parable, but the you use it I use it as a metaphor because I'm not walking from uh, Egypt to Canaan, right? <laughs> But it, for me, it's a powerful analogy of like, yeah, you leave where you know you shouldn't be and where you can't stay. But then often you get trapped in the in-between of not knowing how to get to where you're going. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just got to be encouraged. Like, yeah, they also felt like, I would rather go back. Yeah. You forget how bad it was. Or you forget. And we, we were just hanging out two nights ago. Yeah. And it was like that. I was spiraling. <laughs> I was were, spiraling. You were spiraling. He's like, dude, you're feeling that want to go back there. yeah that wilderness moment where they're like man why don't we go back you know but we're at that point it's like no you can't go back well speak to that speak to to that like you did to me like what was the encouragement you gave me when i'm going i don't know why i did this oh man it's hard to like remember exactly but that moment. Exact. But, but i mean i i just think you you do get in that realization of like okay i know what i felt then i remember and I know the fulfillment I felt when I was there. I know the excitement. And yeah, in your brain, you're like, okay, I could go back. Those job options are there. But I know internally I was, whatever, the grace had lifted. The peace was gone. Yeah. The fulfillment was not there anymore. It's clear and like, this is not my home anymore. No, it's not. And so all I, and it's not even like, like you said, it's no one else to blame. It's no one's fault. It's no like, it's a bad organization. Yeah. Or, Nothing you know? changed for these no. feelings to rise. These are like great it. people. There's a ton of great people. It's like me internally, something shifted, and I know I'm feeling the pulling to the unknown yeah. that's drawing me. And I think it's just that whatever it is, you're in the hallway, man. Yeah. That wilderness is terrifying, yeah. dude. And when you really get pain, like we've had two kids, we're about to have a third. There's always that moment when the pain gets so hard that you're like get this out of me or I wish I wasn't pregnant or whatever, right? Like, you're like this mm-hmm. is, I, can we go back? And this is what I was telling you is I, I'm realizing you actually can't go back. Mm-hmm. And that's the story of the Israelites. See, certain death is going backwards. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You can't, as much as you want to and you're fantasizing what life yeah. was like before this pain, yeah. you can't go back because you've crossed some kind of threshold, some river yeah. you've crossed and now you can't go back. So all you're doing is complaining, which is fine, but you're not actually have any option but going forward. Mm-hmm. And that, I think even that metaphor being pregnant is so powerful. Like once it happens, there's no going back, mm-hmm. you know. Even like peace is separate from comfort. They're not. They don't mean the same thing. Yeah. So, to, so to go back, while you would feel peace, it's actually just comfort. Yeah. And if you act, if you move forward, you're going to get to a place of peace because yeah. you're going to feel fulfilled. Yeah. Fuf- feel Fuf- fulfilled, and mm-hmm. so yeah. Have y'all ever? I know you have. Have you ever read uh, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art? I haven't. Okay. But I, I've. Please do. Literally. It changed my life. Just to. The about resistance. Yeah, that would be. Any. I would say book number, <clears throat> the one thing and the war of art. Yeah, those be two. Two amazing suggestions for anyone feeling stuck. Yeah. And, and I think that kind of might actually answer somebody's question. Um, how did you take steps like quitting a job when it's still uncertain, um, but with clarity? So I think that a lot of what we talked about was. Um, be amazing. Good for that. Yeah. Um, it was, I'll also say, like, that decision took over a year. And it actually took working for two different churches, basically the same kind of job, that both were amazing. Like, it made no mm-hmm. sense not to want to be there. Mm-hmm. Right. And recognizing I still feel the same way. And then processing with friends, mentors, my own family, talking to my sister, my mom, my dad. Like, oh, yeah. you, I, I mean, this is a big decision. So I'm going to include important people in my life. Yeah. And you work it out. Yeah. Like, there's no other way to describe it. But there's no sign in the sky. There's breadcrumbs on the floor. Yeah, and you just go. I don't have any other choice, and I think this is what God also does to you is He makes it makes it so clear. It's not not clear where you should go, but like uncomfortable where you are. Mm-hmm. That you you feel, to the world it looks courageous, but to you it looks like your only option. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It Dude, feels totally. like courage. Everyone's going. I can't believe you quit your job. I'm going. What other option did I have? Yeah, you oh, don't yeah. know my internal world, but what right. other option did I right. have? Yeah, right. But to say, God, I trust you're real and you're leading me somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go for this, right? And then yeah. He also made certain provisions where I was like, okay, this is workable. There's, I know there's a fine line between faith and foolishness. It was like but honoring it. Yeah, I was like, I'm not gonna do this at the expense of my family. I'm not gonna go on a personal journey 
yet my family is living on the streets. Mm-hmm. And God, through its, uh, amazing generosity and circumstances, I realized there's a smart way I can do this. Mm-hmm. And I can take this risk while at the same time insulating that risk some as I figure out where I'm going. Mm-hmm. So without getting into all the details, it's not all about my life. Um, it took over a year for me to wrestle and to ask and to seek. Gosh. For me to so you, you two are great, luckily have each other in this because you guys both left the church. I'm going to include myself in that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but as bros, um, I'm not including myself in that. <laughs> um, like it's, it's a beautiful gift to supplement in this time of confusion for each of you. Yeah. Um, to, and how crazy is it that you moved down here yeah. in the first place? Yeah. Um, and for us to be relatively neighbors. Yeah. And to walk through this together. Yeah. Like I, I think that's a beautiful gift that, that honors while, while you feel internal chaos, mm-hmm. you feel internal chaos, yeah. that you guys have each other. Yeah. And, um, and it's those kinds of things that you look at and go, <laughs> are these benevolent signs yeah yeah are these and you ask like am i making this up am i trying to connect dots but no man this this feels Mm -hmm. like it couldn't be anything but god that we're in the same season and i'm not causing it in you and you're not causing it in me yeah Mm -hmm. it just whoa this is happening and it was happening Mm -hmm. with even more of our friends not just the two of us right oh yeah and when you and our and our partner my wife and all this where my ladies at yeah come on ladies (laughs) so that's always encouraging when it's not just a you thing when you realize this is something that seems like the wind of God is like on mm-hmm. and a, a lot of people's sails are catching it, right? Yeah. Um, so that was a very kind of God. Very mm-hmm. kind. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I feel for anyone that's gone through anything I'm talking about like that and not felt like they had someone that could resonate, mm-hmm. that could be a sounding board or a sense of courage when they had none. Like that's how you get messed up. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes trust too for you to open up. Yeah about this kind of stuff. Uh, and there yeah. and there's probably this like, oh, I know that you're going through that so like like I can share and yeah. and ask you more details. But um it, I think it does take a level of trust um to be able to go down these roads say and and, oh, and allow someone to come into your life and speak into your life yeah. to say I do need this. I I need what I know that you're kind of going through the same thing, but I yeah. also know that you're a wise person. So yeah. speak into me yeah. about me. Remind me of yeah. who I am. <clears throat> I think that's like a, the beautiful gift of life to have what I would say real friends, whether they're older or younger. Yeah. The people that are honest with you, you can be completely yourself with them. But then they'll speak into you without any kind of like back end. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no like I'm trying to get you twist to... or like, I need you to help me build my thing or I'm going to get some money later. It's like, dude, I'm just, I'm for your well being. Yeah. You know, and I'm not in pain to want to like make you influence this decision it's like dude i'm just for you man yeah and this is what it feels like and that has been probably some of the best gifts Mm -hmm. we've experienced yeah you know and i know we've well that was the gift of y'all was like i was in your wedding this is i know y'all almost eight years ago on the 29th this year on my birthday right Look at you that. Got married on my Holy birthday. Holy crap. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That is so weird. So like you weren't just somebody that I could estimate and measure in a yeah. quick sense. Like you know what you're talking about and I'll choose to trust you. Yeah. This was so personal for me, all of this. That it was like God knew I needed to be near someone. I was like, you've known me since I was like mm-hmm. 14. Mm-hmm. You know? And I will never forget first meeting you and then when you um, married Caroline and you all came over to our apartment in Decatur one yeah. night. I, you all left that night and... I told Ben, I was like, there's something, there's something. something there, I don't yeah. have any idea what it is, yeah. but there's something that mm-hmm. we're going to, not right now, but we're in, in the about future. six years. We're going to be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had I known. About six years. And three children later. Yeah. Um, Finally, but, we're in yeah. the same town. Yeah. yeah. But I knew somehow it, we would come back together and, mm-hmm. it, and it's so cool. It's so cool. To I watch. think what's, it's, it's a weird phase because we're at this place of like, I guess in some ways so much of our like our ego is just dying huh. that like I don't even know what it is to build anymore. Yeah. Like a few years ago be like, all right, you're going to start a ministry or, yeah. a, you know, so go, clear, right. It was so like clear. It's like, dude, all that stuff. There's so many things that I feel like are just uh, needing to die. Yeah. You know, yeah. that it's causing me to like, dream again but with like really pure intentions of like what what would i 
uh, invest my time into. Yeah. Take away building, image, all that. Like, yeah. what's important to me? When ego's know? gone, when money's not the concern, which it is, but if you can distance yourself, yeah. then what's left? What is left? Yeah, what comes you know? out of you? So that's kind of in this, we're, we're both, we, we both have been put in this spot of like, God's provided for us. So we're like, kind of like leaning into this place of, man, well, then what do you invest your time into yeah. when money's off the table and you do have time? Yeah. You, know? and you can so, go to bed at night and go, that was a good day. Yeah. That was worth my time. That helped somebody in the way that God made me to help people. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because that's what we're looking for. I'm not looking for the American dream. I'm not chasing some idea of what success or whatever looks like. I'm going, I think you made me on purpose. I think all of us are a gift to each other. You just have to be in the right circumstance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to need that. You know, like no one values the gift of administration until you're trying to do something. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh God, will you help me execute this? Like, Absolutely. you're brilliant. I need you, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going, man, so glad you're in that role because mm-hmm. how you were made is such a gift to me in this moment. Yeah. And I think we're just going, how did you make us? And we know we've been close. Like people seem to have been blessed by what we've been doing the last 10 years. But you just have this nagging sense, I could help more. Mm-hmm. And I could feel even more joy in the process of doing that. And it's easy to get excited about multiple things to, yeah. to invest in. And to All right, to I'm going to get get a question here. Yes, I'm going to give a little mean. give a little shout. God, we got a lot of different people in here. Brenda, Peyton, Amanda, Maria, Janelle. Marne, Lance, Jenna, Janelle, Caroline, Esteban, um, Courtney, on. and Carrie. Gosh. You got My the, sisters. the yeah. McClure family in the house. Okay, we have a question. What happens if you don't have this kind of community that we're speaking of? Where yeah. would you go? Where, where do you go if you're... Counseling. If you're... <laughs> Seriously, Honestly, y'all. Really? Honestly. Seriously. I, we've done counseling as a couple. Yeah. Um, and I haven't had the money yet to do it myself. <laughs> but I think that was the gift is that I had people I could trust and I could be honest with. Mm-hmm. Um, but Object- if I, an objective. An objective? Yeah. Because they weren't invested in what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You're just my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not making money off of me. Yeah. I'm not taking up a spot on your roster, right? Yeah. If you don't have that, God, we're so we're so blessed to have yeah. counselors. Like yeah. people that study human behavior and, mm-hmm. and relationships and especially some that are both followers of Jesus mm-hmm. and have that part of their mm-hmm. understanding as well as how you work. Mm-hmm. And to be able to go somewhere... And just know, I can trust you. This is not leaking anywhere. And that being an investment. And that being an investment. Like, invest in yourself. Yeah, I remember the first time we went to counseling, my wife and I were meeting with this couple that were so awesome. We just had them over for dinner. And we're like, hey, here's all the areas that we just cannot get breakthrough in. We feel like we're at an impasse and we're frustrated. What would you tell us to do? We want to learn from you. And he's he's like, well, I don't have that time or that wisdom, so you just need to go to counseling. I was like, no, like we can't afford it. And he goes, counseling. Yeah, ah, this guy's we're not like, broken. This guy's like sixty, and he's raised three of the most fantastic sons I've ever seen. All hmm. successful, amazing, good people. And I was like, you're my hope. And he's like, dude, we live an hour away. You know, yeah. like we can't do. He's like, go to counseling. I was like, but we can't afford it. And this is what he said. He goes, Drew, if a if a hole opened up in your house right now on the roof, can you afford it? And I was like, I'd find a way. And he's like, well, this is at least as important. Mm-hmm. as a hole in your that's roof awesome. so find a way mm-hmm. and we we're like okay you know what i mean mm-hmm. Dude, he so incredible. put the value of our relationship on par with our security of our yeah. home that he was like you when your car breaks down you find a way yeah. when oh, your yeah. marriage breaks down find a way yeah, do sell what you got to sell yeah. work how many extra hours you got to work go to counseling so mm-hmm. we did and so that's the easy answer i would tell you is in the meantime trying to grow relationships mm-hmm. that might take 15 years do that but in the process of that, go to counseling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's an answer. That's a great word. Oh, uh, Chris Oliver's on here too. Hey, Come Chris. On, Chris. Hey. Love you, buddy. Um, what else you want to ask? What's all, right, all right. Well, let's talk about what you're doing in Colorado. Yes. Yeah. Right. What's so this we're summer? Wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we this is the second year that we're doing something called Sojourn. It's a uh, ministry company kind of thing that I started, and my wife and I started. And our goal is we just wanted to provide a space for people to go away and to go on a similar journey to what we're going on is for really any age, but it lends itself more to the college and just out of college age because it's all summer. It's three months long. Um, I think short-term investment is great. I think if you can, the longer you can be with yourself and reflection, reflecting mm. and being immersed in an experience, the more transformative and oh, long-lasting absolutely. it is. So we also thought environment matters. So 
we, we felt led and we found a place in uh, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado in Estes Park to do this. So we have. And it looks stunning. Yeah, I mean, you're right on the edge of Rocky Mountain National Park, some of the most beautiful <laughs> places in the earth. And so people sign up to come with us. They pay three thousand dollars to come spend three months learning from God, from the community, and from myself and any of the people that I bring in to invest in them mm-hmm. uh, on a nightly basis. And they're working, so they're not just sitting around writing in their journals. Like they're living some life. They're working forty hours yeah. a week, so they're making money. But they're also like getting to see themselves in environments again. Mm-hmm. Like this is how I respond to stress. Mm-hmm. This is how I handle jerks or whatever and then in that we go okay so three nights a week we're also processing and we're doing individual coaching uh, with you along the way awesome, is this something that people can still sign up for or no. is it closed it's closed this summer it's closed yeah um and we have the pitzers out there so i've always been out there every summer both in colorado and a different project i started in the summer but we were pregnant with our third our baby's doing like two weeks so we're like we feel led to do this but we can't be out there and it just worked out great that a close friend of ours was and they're, uh, they're available. amazing. And he has like all the skills I have plus some. Yeah. yeah. And they were wanting an adventure. So we're like, will you go out and be there on the ground and be and the mom and dad that, yeah. and the coach? And I'll just come in and other speakers will come in mm-hmm. and brief snippets. So they're out there uh, manning that fort and Sweet. just doing awesome. Cool. So yeah, you can check out more at SojournColorado.com. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Well, this has been such a gift. Yeah. I know we'll have Drew just on more and uh yeah i'm sure at an upcoming gathering drew will be there so um you, do you have anything um on your thought bar this week you want to yeah. share kelly check the- out her thought bar they're so yes. good you guys here um <laughs> these are these are great yeah okay so i just posted one today that um oh it could actually relate a lot to what we talked about tonight yeah. um it's disappointment in yourself will plant your feet in a place you don't want to grow Sift through your struggle, struggle to save anything that's teachable. Then carry it with you as you carry it on. Um, wow. And then the little subhead for that is, it's okay to pause when we don't know the next step. It's exhausting trying to silence self-correction. Change your perspective. Allow yourself some time and loosen your expectations. You'll surprise yourself with what you're capable of when you grow in wisdom. Wow. That's so, yeah. really good. It's awesome. You've been on an interior journey. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, that's all, a lot of it has actually stayed within me Mm -hmm. and um again i'm calling out my ladies we need to like i i I am passionately searching for more women who are going on this journey because there are too few to mention and i love dudes come on love my husband (laughs) um but i would really love to share um this process with women and um, it's okay to speak out about it and it's okay because you're not alone in it. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So good. That's all I want to say. I'm so happy that you're sharing these internal revelations you get because yeah. I've heard them for years and a few of our friends have, but I just think it's such a good release for you yeah. to be like, hey, listen, this is what I'm processing. Mm-hmm. So people and get a window. And that's really all it is. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's just a release. It's mm-hmm. not because I think that I'm going to Start a change new organization. your life. Or yeah. like what I have to say is going to profoundly move you to change your life. Mm. It's just me getting my thoughts on paper yeah. or socially. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a commitment to myself to say, okay, you're going to make this public. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, can I just say, like, on that year journey where I was learning the interior world, which I, when you say that, it makes it sound like you've finished exploring the interior yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. As I became a novice, and I'm <laughs> myself, one of the simple but profound lessons I learned was, man, the worst things happen when any emotion stays in you. Like, if it's not expressed, it's meant to be like a river. That whatever's coming in, good or bad, is actually meant to come through you and mm-hmm. go out of you. Mm-hmm. And when you dam it up is when things get toxic, right? Mm-hmm. So when yes. you have, think about it, like when you, like I was driving through the mountains so full of like, oh my God, I'm inspired. But I, I, I was discontent because Caroline wasn't there for me just to let it go through me and go, do you see this too? Like, I want to share mm-hmm. this with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So good emotions, but also negative ones, like disappointment like you are talking about. You don't guard yourself from it. You process it. Yeah. And so sadness, loss, grief, mm-hmm. like Good. most of us go, no, no, don't come in my life. But if yeah. it's here, how do you stop it from staying in here? And how do yeah. you actually release it? But yeah. creativity is the same way. So that's why I'm saying that. Creativity has been birthing in you since you were little. Mm-hmm. But now you're saying, I'm actually realizing for me to be healthy, whether I know where it's going or not, I- I've got to let it go through. Yeah. Yes. It's unhealthy if it stays in me, not just because... Yeah the world's missing out. It actually just, mm-hmm. it begins to bother me more than bless me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel pent up of like, I'm supposed to share this. 
I don't even know why, but this needs to go through. So maybe uh, some people can take some mm-hmm. cues on that. Yeah. Creativity, grief, whatever it is, like let it run through mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And, it's stop good, crying. It's, and it's good to retain it it's to help retaining <laughs> yes the process as well yeah because it's easy just to put it off yeah like oh i just revelation wow that was huge and then you forget like because you didn't actually process the whole entire thing of it yep. and invite the world in to collaborate with you how yeah. they respond which is sharing. vulnerable and scary oh, yeah. which we're all just excited to do thanks um, for having me okay That's last fun. question um top th- three sources of influence for you What's like, what's like rocking your face off um, and helping you move forward in life and helping you cope with all of this stuff and deal with all of this stuff, navigate? God, my, my wife and my friends are that huge source of like, am I crazy? Mm-hmm. My family too. Mm-hmm. Am I crazy? And can you yeah. give me wisdom? Can you give me encouragement? That's a big influence right now. Uh, there's not a lot of books. Like I feel like where I'm going now, books can't take me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I already know the direction it's the yeah. matter of you've, walking you've in. read enough them saying you have to do yeah. this yeah so yeah. like in some senses ignorance has killed me and so i needed to read mm-hmm. and then other senses understanding has killed me because i can hide behind it and go just one more book just just yeah. one more confirmation mm-hmm. right one more podcast it's actually not that anymore like i just have to do the work yeah. yeah i have to go for it i can't listen to anybody else's how they did it like i've got to figure out how i'm doing it mm-hmm. and i've got to be in the process and learning as i go mm-hmm. and leaning on god and in the meantime I don't know why this is hilarious. Music is on there. Ed Sheeran's album, Deluxe, is like my favorite. I really? listen to it on a repeat. I don't know what it does. I don't know why. I have no crit- your musical. I don't know why I'm loving it so much. Because it's, it's Ed Sheeran and he's a. Yeah, but for whatever reason, like that's the only music I'm listening to right now. It's mm-hmm. on repeat and it does something to me. It gets me in a good spot. I just it's like in the background, his mm-hmm. songs and whatever, and yeah. I just I love it. It's cool. So yeah. Kind of well, thanks, answer. Drew. Yeah, thanks this for is coming amazing. and hanging with us and chatting. And so fun. Y'all thanks. Are your thanks for joining the uh, Bread and Wine live cast. Uh, yeah, we'll be just continuing to do this. So thank you guys <laughs> so much. <laughs> no. must, which, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> which camera am I looking at? <laughs> Drew, love you, man. Thank thanks you. Thanks for being here. Too. It's awesome. Have a good week. See you.